I think this laptop is the king of laptop land, and in this video I'm going to explain why. I went to Brussels recently and met up with Patrick Rambles, I'll put links to the videos that we made in the description, but the whole point of that trip, apart from seeing Patrick, was to see if I could basically survive on an iPad mini for the entire time. Spoiler, it worked brilliantly. There was one big issue, which you'll see in the video, but generally speaking, this was a fantastic companion. That said, I did miss my Mac occasionally, but it's the Mac in particular that I missed that I think tells the biggest story. And that Mac was the M2 MacBook Air. So it wasn't my 16 inch MacBook Pro because I value my back. It wasn't even the 14 inch MacBook Pro that I've fallen in love with recently. It was Apple's thinnest, lightest, and in the M2 guys, most flawed laptop. And before I reveal why that's the case, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Trend Micro and the fantastic premium security suite. If you're looking for complete device and identity protection in your home, and let's be honest, who isn't these days? I think premium security suite will be your knight in shining armor. And that's because it includes a VPN, password management, mobile security, ID security, protection against ransomware, email scamming, and other forms of cybercrime. It works across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Chromebooks. Basically, no matter what devices you have in your house, they will be protected. That means the entire family can get involved, and don't worry, it's super simple to set up, really easy to use. It even comes with 24-7 human support, which in the days of AI is rather rare. But what I love the most about premium security suite is that they haven't cut any corners, so each piece of software within the suite is fantastic in its own right. One of the best examples of this is the VPN. It is a fantastic VPN which I use all the time in the coffee shop down the road when I'm working away from the studio. And if you want that same protection for your family, for your kids, for whoever lives in your house, then Premium Security Suite is really worth a look. So to find out more, just click that link in the description. And now it's time for a confession. I've mentioned in previous videos that when I get a new MacBook, I'm very careful with it. So I treat it with kid gloves. One of the things I do is I just put it very gently onto any surface, like, like that, really gently. I also keep a very eagle eye on it. So if I leave it naked like that on a surface, I'm watching for people who might put something on top of it. And if they do that, they get asked to leave the room and I eject them from my life immediately. I also buy a case immediately. And for the M2 MacBook Air, I still recommend the Inatech hard shell case. This just makes me feel much happier about this. And this nervousness that I feel about new MacBooks was made all the worse with this M2 version because it's so thin, I kept worrying about bending it. This midnight version just looks like it can scratch just as easily as it can smudge. So I was particularly careful with this. However, less than a year into the ownership of this computer, all of that has gone out the window. And this always happens with me in tech. You might be the same. Basically, after about a year of use, I take those kid gloves off. I just don't get quite so silly about where I put it. But weirdly, with the M2 MacBook Air, that has happened sooner. And I think it's partly because it let me down last year. I'll explain why in a moment, if you can't remember. But also because it is just a tool for my business. So it does get chucked around a little bit. I don't always put it in that case. As you can see, I don't clean it at all. And you know what? It's absolutely fine. Even that clicking noise, which I mentioned in a recent video, which I think was down to my nine month old, well, he's now nearly a year old son, trying to eat the laptop, even that has gone. And I think that means that the M2 MacBook Air is continuing the trend of MacBook Airs being tough little beasts. And that's why you still see so many really old MacBook Airs in coffee shops. That's the first reason this is still the king of laptops. And the second reason I need to demonstrate. So come with me. Have you noticed how the thing that I'm reviewing always makes its way to the next scene before me? Anyway, there are two things about MacBook Airs in terms of portability, which are just amazing. The first one relates to all MacBooks, and now I think of it, it has nothing to do with portability, but who cares? Basically, it's the ability to do this. You can open them without touching anything apart from the lid. This is a much bigger deal than it seems. However, the best thing about the MacBook Air, which is the second thing which is related actually to portability, is this. So once you've opened it gracefully with your thumb, 
hang on, haven't thought about this at all. Once you've done that, you can take your forefinger and your thumb and pick it up. I can quite happily, without damaging my hand or my fingers, walk around with it like this and kind of survey my empire. You can't do this, I don't think, with any other laptop. This is really satisfying. The next thing is that if you buy the right spec for your M2 MacBook Air, it absolutely flies. Now, I mentioned earlier that this one let me down last year. Basically, I went to London and off the cuff, I had to do a bit of video editing, 10-bit, 4K footage from this Sony camera. This thing completely failed. And it was made all the more annoying by the fact that I knew the M1 MacBook Air with the exact same eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gig SSD would have done the job perfectly. I think it's common knowledge now that the M2 chip in this and several other Macs is a bit problematic. I do think it's a stopgap for Apple, but that doesn't mean it's completely useless. Firstly, if you are the sort of person who is only gonna use this for email, writing, admin, normal computer tasks, the base model remains fantastic. That is what this one is, and it has never let me down. It only let me down when I pushed it beyond normal computer stuff. So, if you're the sort of person who wants to do some extra creative work with your M2 MacBook Air, just make sure you get the 16 gig of unified memory and at least the 512 gig SSD. See? Simple. So your question now, understandably, might be, should I buy one of these M2 MacBook Airs now, even though an M3 version is apparently on the way? The answer to this is really straightforward because it's only a rumor at the moment that we're getting an M3 version of the MacBook Air. We probably will, in fact, we definitely will at some stage, but I have no idea when that's gonna be. Waiting for Apple to do something based on rumors is not a good idea, so if you want one of these now, just go and buy it. If you follow my super simple buying guidance a moment ago, you'll pick one that will last you for ages and ages and ages and you will absolutely love it. So I hereby crown the slightly flawed but brilliantly robust and slightly irritating and incredibly undeniably lovable M2 MacBook Air as king of the laptop jungle. And I want to hear from people in the comments who A agree with me and B really don't agree with me. Just keep it civil guys but yeah get involved and if you've still got time hang around for a link to a video, well the video that I mentioned at the start of this video, where I went to Brussels with just the iPad mini for comfort. It's really interesting.